Hi, Ben here from 498 Nerd. And today we're going to start a new series called Mod Potential. And we're going to kind of review blasters, we're going to take a look at them, but we're not going to really be looking at stock performance and we're not going to be looking at er ergonomics because both of those things, modders, can change. But what we're looking at is the potential for the blaster to improve and to perform super stock wars. So the first blaster that we're going to look at is the Nerf Desolator. The Desolator uh, is a electric blaster. It's a flywheel blaster and so that kind of takes us where we're going to go with, with kind of this review. And we're going to start with uh, the switches and, and the firing mechanisms on this blaster. So this, it has a rev trigger and uh, a firing trigger very similar to uh, the firing mechanism of the Strife. In fact, internally it's almost exactly the same. So when we're looking to wire this up with a new micro switch and, and putting all that together, uh, it's going to work very, very well from a mod perspective. There's plenty of room down here in this handle to put just about any size micro switch you got it and want to. Uh, and that kind of a thing has been done for several years and, and it's been cut, gotten the micro switches, putting these into these semi auto blasters, have gotten down to be almost a science from a mod perspective. So that is going to take very well to uh, modification. The second aspect of this blaster we're going to look at is. Uh, the flywheel cage itself. Um, and, and as you can see, the front of this blaster is very, very narrow with the exception of the cutout here uh, where uh, the flywheels go into. So it, it's kind of got a, it's got a standard flywheel gap, it's got a standard uh, type of uh, flywheel setup, but what you don't have in this blaster is you have space for really anything else up here. You, there, there's not room in the front of this blaster. You can take a look at it from this angle, from the front. There's not room to put like a second flywheel cage or anything like that. So that's going to limit you to a standard set of flywheel mods, whether that be um, you know, putting worker flywheels on it, you know, your standard motor upgrades. Um, if you want to do 180s, you can extend those back out. You can kind of do all the standard things, but there's not really any way to go above and beyond that into like a four flywheel setup or anything in the front. Um, the third thing we'll look at, and this one I think is, is pretty important because it's an area where this blaster is, ends up is going to shine from a mod perspective, is the battery compartment. So if you take the battery compartment here, it, for comparison, well, if you take a strike and you've got the battery compartment that's sitting up here against the side, and that battery compartment is sitting right on top of the mechanisms for the triggers and, and to allow the blaster to shoot. So you don't have a lot of depth, and what modders have done, they've actually done custom types of um, Doing, they will do custom uh, battery cover trays and things to cover that cover that all up. With this blaster, though, that's moved back in the stock, and that, from a modding perspective, gives you real, two real advantages. One, it puts your weight back. So if you want to put a nice lipo back here, it balances the weight out in the blaster, and it makes it you know just come out and just a little bit more comfortable. Nice nice feel to it with what. The second advantage is even though this is a very thin blaster and you can see the profile, because there's no mechanism on the back side of where this battery tray, you can take the bottom out of that battery tray and extend the lipo back. The problem, a lot of people with the semi-automatic flywheel blaster, they like to use a motor that, that runs on a 3S lipo. And then the problem again, as I said before, the 3S lipo is too wide for the battery tray. But with this, you can get a nice 3S lipo 18 to 20 millimeter range Take the bottom of this battery tray out and it fits in there perfectly. So that's going to be a, a big advantage for people that are wanting to run uh, 3S type motors and 3S LiPo in here. It's just going to fit and it's going to fit nicely. Uh, one other aspect on this blaster from a modification standpoint that I wanted to mention is all of this clear. Now other people have talked about how clear, but if you're wanting to do lighting, if you're wanting to do LEDs uh, with your modification, there is a whole lot that can be done. You've got a huge amounts of this clear orange that you can backlight, illuminate, and do a lot of different things. I've even seen somebody put their voltage meter uh, underneath this clear so that you can take it and look at it. And you, and you look at it here, you can see the voltage meter, uh, the voltage of your battery. So, bringing this all together, what do we think of the desolator? I'm going to give the desolator three kush darts, three and a half, we'll say three and a half kush darts out of five. It is a good solid semi-automatic platform. There's a lot of advantages back here to modify this from the battery compartment. 
but you can't really go above and beyond standard super stock because there's just no way to do anything more up here. So three, you're gonna get 110, 120 range FPS potential out of this thing. And the, the half is because of what you can do with the battery tray and the light. So anyway, this is mod potential on the Nerf Desolator. Thanks for watching.